So one thing I found while I was going back through the house towards that scary bit was this letter in the parents' room. Uh, so, Dear Jan, oh honey, let me tell you, I understand how you feel. Bob and I have had down periods. It's been a bit of a uh, way of life, actually. You get used to each other and you live your own lives in the same house. The kids grow up, they go away. I'm sorry, this isn't helping, is it? Don't worry, Terry will get over whatever's distracting him. Things will go back to normal. And as for Sam being distant, that's what te that's a teenager for you. Nothing to worry about. In the meantime, though, this controlled burn sounds like quite the adventure. But let's cut to the chase. This new ranger they sent, that's what I want to hear about. Ranger Rick, you have to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything and send pictures. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. Keep your chin up until Terry is out of his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend Carol. She adores them. So there we go. Sounds like there is definitely a little bit of an obsession with Rick. Uh, and yeah, a, a bad period between her and Terry. Okay, so we're back in the library. And it looks as though the passage is on the right here. Ooh. Okay, so this is going to be creepy. There's already creepy newspapers on the walls here. So what have we got? Ghost Hunters, Sam and Lonnie, investigation log, hidden compartments found, three. One in the library, one in the upstairs hall, one in the foyer, although no supernaturals discovered. Okay, so hopefully we'll add that to the menu. Uh, the menu? The map. So, creepy newspaper stuff. Oh my god, I don't trust any house that's... Ooh. So what's this? Is this the... Oh, so this is the parents' bedroom. But there's nothing... There's nothing... So it's just a, a corridor. There's no... Like, notes or anything? Oh, there's a, cru a crucifix. Oh! Hello. Hello. Um, did I drop the crucifix? Where's the crucifix? Maybe I should just get out of here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go here. Did I drop, I dropped the crucifix and I don't know where it is because it's really dark now. Or it's bugged out. Um. Okay, so we dropped the crucifix, but it said something about for God so loved the world, which, you know, isn't creepy in the slightest. No siree. So I've got nothing there. I can't see the crucifix anywhere on the floor. Okay, I'll just double check and see if it was put into my inventory. No? Okay. So we've got the first one there. But then there was a hidden panel somewhere in this room as well? This one here? No? No. So wherever the door is, is it the other side of the door? I'm just gonna click on all these panels because they all look pretty suspicious. Pretty juicy for a... Oh, there we go. <laughs> the Misfits. Very nice. Plus Maidenhead. So... At Todd's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her, my eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. My heart was beating so fast. I rolled over, I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me, and was so close, and whispered in my ear, I really like you. I just nodded my head, and I really hoped she could tell. I really hoped that she meant what I think she did. I felt like a shook-up can of soda ever since. I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. This is the sweetest love story I have ever followed. Um, in the meantime, there was another thing around here. Another panel. Oh, there it is. Oh, a Ouija board. Here we go. Take the first combo scrap. So, zero. Okay. Read note. Who are you? What do you want? To come, oh dear, to come back. Um, 
Okay, well, kids, don't play with Ouija boards. Creepy stuff happens. So we found the first scrap. Um, so there was another hidden thing, wasn't there? So there's one there, there's one there, and there's one outside Dad's office. So, we head back downstairs, close that, so I'm bang my knee on it. So this is starting to turn, I don't know if the, if the Ouija board and stuff like that is just a kind of red herring to kind of get us a bit freaked out when really it's a, a story about Sam and Lonnie. Private, do not read. Heaven at the edge of the world. So this is another continuation of the story that she wrote. So read it in your own time if you want to pause the video here. So she turned the first mate from a man into a woman. And that's the second part of the combo. Okay. So now we can go into Sam's locker, which should, you know, have some interesting readings in it. I think that's pretty cool that the house has, uh, has hidden areas around it. It makes me wonder if I'm gonna find anything in my uh, Tubi bungalow, in my Tubi house. Um, so enter combination. Um, let me just double check. It was uh, 0501. That's not too hard. 0501. There we go. I'm glad it's like that and not an actual turn right, left, turn right, right, left, because my god, I can't. I, I never managed that in uh, in games. Um, I used to smoke secretly when I was a teenager. I used to hide them and then go on a cycle ride to like some fields near my house and go, oh, hello, um, and go smoke. Finally, Gillian Anderson. Sounds good to me. Um, here we go. Lonnie is very pretty, isn't she? Lonnie came over today, but everything was different. She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think... But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. I felt like I was gonna cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie... Do you think... you... could ever... And that's when she kissed me. <laughs> This is like, I, I know that there's going to be a sad ending coming because it's inevitable, but this really is the sweetest love story. Okay, so now we're in the basement. Are there going to be creepy things in the basement? Almost certainly. Put back, read note. Dear Samantha, I would cordially like thank you for having me. Thanks for your holiday. Weird being around your parents, but pretty funny. Lonnie, a fancy man. Quite. Uh, dear Mr. Soto, please allow me. So they're just playing with each other then. Um, oh, that's really cute. Potato chips. What's on the? Oh, it's a bulldog clip, or a you know clip seal in the freshness. Um, so more crap down here. Nope. <laughs> Keep that firmly on. Examine drawing. <laughs> oh my God, this is so cute. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone, or go home for the night, or it's just quiet and we're alone, we say I love you. So there we go, the difference between Caitlyn and Sam. Caitlyn's more the scientific person. Although they, they had the same final um, final bit there. That said, I think 
it looks like Sam kind of pretty much copied exactly what Caitlin wrote and just worked it into her story. So there's the difference between their two plaques. Um, so there's a rather creepy boiler around the corner. We're going to look at the creepy boiler. More of my stuff down here. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's get ready for the jump. My god, this place is huge. Like, ridiculous. Are all American houses like this? I guess America's bit bigger than the UK and has more land space. I don't think I could have a basement like this without being thoroughly and permanently freaked out at everything. One of Grandad's books. Joyce, a complete understanding. Um, okay. Sure. Uh, oh. Um, Richard Greenbrier. So is that Dad? Has he just, like, cut out a photo of Dad? Because this is, because, or, or, Sin or whatever his name was. Was the uncle. One of Dad's books. What was that? Oh, a letter from Grandad. Dear Terence, thanks for sending me, sending along a copy of your newly published book. An author's first published manuscript is a momentous occasion. I read it this afternoon. I certainly recognize my son in the subject matter. An author's work is the externalization of that which he holds dear and that which he fears. And in this respect, I believe your work was successful. But the lens through which the personal Sean was needlessly clouded by genre cliches and implausible dime store science fiction de ex machina, machina. The great author speaks of life, life's milieu in clear and honest tones, the lens that refracts their thoughts without distor distortion. I congratulate you on surviving the great ordeal that is publication and rest assured that readers of your chosen genre will lap up co copies hungrily. But I urge you to shred artifice. You can do better. Hmm. Well, that's always one of the hardest things is getting criticism from your own parents. Although, you know. Aww, they have a pendant. I love pendants. I hope to get a pendant with someone in the future like that. That'd be so cool. But yeah, getting criticism from your father, so seeking approval from your father. So this is citizenship. Does that mean she wasn't a Native American or? I don't know. Canada, Canadian. Okay, that was it. So she's Canadian moving to uh, America. What's this? Oh, there's a room down here. And another room down here. No, seriously though, how big is this? Mr. Mason's room. Oh, so this is the old fashioned, like. Okay, and now I'm officially getting creeped out. So I guess this is like servants' quarters. Uh, so Yolanda is now in Mexico. Is she? Which I guess explains the Mexican skull upstairs. Um, I'm so happy you like the drawing. I was thinking of us when we drew it. You'd love Mexico, I think, probably. The nature here is totally different. I lie here in bed and I can almost feel you. So it's basically a love letter. I'm, think I'm taking tons of photos. We will spend so much time in the dark room. So more of their secret relationship together. Um, I'm guessing there's another tape somewhere. Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit. And he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, you can? And she was like, probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. And I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June. But till then, I'm gonna be at every single show. So a sorted a little uh, note about Oh that's cremation. Oh, I think they're cremation ashes. Oh my god. So we're finding more of the uncle's stuff. 
But yeah, sort of a little note about a sexual encounter between the two of them then, hey? Hey Sam, I'm writing to you from Multnomah Falls. I'm here on a stupid class trip, which is stupid because it's March and I don't know if anyone running this school has been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy in March. Wish you were here. Oh wait, you are here because I'm writing this to you in the gift shop. <laughs> That's pretty cute. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. The kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Okay, I'm not sure which way to go here, and that just freaked the crap out of me. So there's another pathway back there. This house is huge! Like, seriously, what is this bit now? Is it gonna ever end, this bit? I don't know which way to go. I feel like I should have gone back to the other one. And there's another corridor down here? Jesus Christ. Uh, more potato chips. A label that says, Girl Justice Now. Pizza. Really mucky pizza. Dear Miss Greenbrier, I appreciate the time and effort you put into writing a letter. It showed initiative as was well written, but does not change my mind as a matter. While I understand that Miss DeSoto is a friend of yours, the fact of the matter is she defaced school property with defanity. The fact is she allegedly defaced her own locker in retaliation for another doing the same to yours as immaterial. As to your complaint that no other student has been punished for their part in this incident, uh, the fact is that no convincing evidence to who might have defaced your locker, in other words, no one to punish, let the issue drop. So it looks like some kind of bullying at school. I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to lie? About who she is? She said they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to like, defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. She sounds like a very angry girl to me. Oh my gosh, so this is another part of the house? Crikey. Okay, so we're into the part that was locked before. Here we go. So, guardian angels up above, bless the house with lots of love. Examine slip. So she's got getting her hair done and stuff. Before we go on here, I'm gonna go back to, well, to this bit, and then also to that side room with the bells. Uh, it's a lie to mom and dad situation, but it was so worth it. So this is scraps of her diary. Um, psycho horse girl. Skeletons. <laughs> so it looks like scraps of her diary, really. Here. Uh, and what's this bit? So I'm guessing this is another entrance to somewhere? So is this to the locked room upstairs? Pull handle. Is this the attic, maybe? No! So this is my spare room. Okay. Okay, here we are. Ah, the first floor plan. Gosh, so there's quite a lot more to this. There's a greenhouse, dining, kitchen. Another safe here. Um, so where does this lead to? The kitchen? Doesn't work. How convenient. Oop. I've got a, a horse, like a little toy horse. Okay, anything else I can grab in here? Grab scrap. I can't 
can't read it in here, so let's read it out by the light. Uh, order this month. Brandy, whiskey, and whatever the second one. Governor remains very focused with enforcement in Boone County. Believe this arrangement shall hold for some time. So was he, like, part of the, uh, prohibition, maybe? Okay, so remember that there's that safe there. We'll come back to it. Oh. Terry. So he used to live here until about age 12 and then moved out. Presumably because something happened. 